Good morning, my wild and beautiful friends. I'm so glad you're here. Today we're talking spanakopita. It is by far my favorite way to eat spinach. Simple to make, delicious hot or cold, and a total crowd pleaser. This dish screams spring to me and I can't wait for you to try it. Keep on watching to see how we make it. Okay, to get started, you'll need one small white onion chopped, or in my case, a large onion cut in half, <laughs> if we're just gonna use half of it. I've also got two cloves of garlic that I'm gonna crush up here. Little random useless fact, the only garlic crusher I've ever owned was for pottery <laughs> until very recently. They can be a very handy clay tool to make little tiny pieces of hair or decorations, just so you know. Anywho, we're moving on. Now I've got some fresh dill. I'm going to chop up about a tablespoon. I'd say on the heavy side of a tablespoon. You can definitely use dried dill for this recipe as well. If you can find some fresh dill though, it really does pack an awesome fresh punch to the entire dish. So I'm just chopping that up pretty well. And we're gonna add that to our onions and garlic. And to brighten things up even more, I'm gonna hit these guys with some lemon juice and lemon zest. I do not know what I did with my microplane, so I'm using this little lemon zester that we have for cocktails. I'm just kind of going through with short bursts so we don't get really long pieces of lemon. It seemed to work just fine. You can definitely use a vegetable peeler to take off the rind and then just chop that up really small. Just be careful to not get any of that white pith part because that's where the bitterness is going to come in. If you just take the yellow, it's going to give you all that fragrant oil and punch of flavor. Just taking that little seed out of there. Then I'm going to juice the entire lemon into our mixture here. Next up, I'm adding two tablespoons of olive oil and then some salt and some pepper. Amounts of each ingredient will of course be typed down below. Just giving this a quick little mix before we add our next ingredient to make sure that dill can get nice and dispersed and not clump up. Now we've got some vegan feta. This is an optional ingredient, but I really think it takes things up a notch. It has just a lovely zing and creaminess and almost a briny-like flavor that just complements all of these flavors super well. So if you can get your hands on some vegan feta, this, I believe, is a 12-ounce pack. I'll double-check before I type it below. I'm just going to crumble it into our mixture here, I'm trying to get these pieces. This kind of crumbles like goat cheese. It's very creamy, not quite as hard of a cheese as actual feta, but it, it's a quite a good substitute. I have to, like, be careful to not take too many samples of this while we're, <laughs> while we're getting things together. Okay, cheese is crumbled in. I have taken minimal sample bites. I'm gonna stir this on up a little bit and then we're gonna get started on our spinach. You can definitely cook down fresh spinach, but I find that chopped frozen spinach is the easiest way to go and you honestly can't tell the difference and it's way less work. So I'm just defrosting that on our stove top here. I don't have a microwave handy, so if you have a microwave, that might be a way easier way to do this, but this works. I'm just dumping everything into this colander here. What we're gonna try to do is get out as much moisture that's left in this broccoli. This is not broccoli, it's spinach. <laughs> oh geez, it's been a long day, guys, sorry. We're gonna get out as much moisture from the spinach as we can so we don't end up with a soggy spanakopita. So I'm just starting by letting it drain into that pan from the colander and I'm gonna push it around with our wooden spoon here. Once we've got most of it out that way, we're going to use a tea towel to squeeze out the rest. So when you do get to the point where you're gonna strain it a little bit more with a tea towel, keep in mind that it will turn whatever you're using green. So I ended up just using, I have this gray tish, dish towel that's very clean. Definitely make sure it's clean. I'm gonna dump our spinach out and then I'm gonna fold up all four corners and just kind of squeeze and twist out any extra liquid I can get out before we add that to the rest of our mixture. There's still quite a bit in there. It's kind of amazing how much water comes out of these little guys. Okay, spinach has been squeezed to pretty much almost nothing. <laughs> that is almost, that's over 30 ounces of spinach right there. Isn't that incredible? So I'm just gonna crumble this into our bowl here with the rest of our ingredients that we've got going on. So I'm just gonna crumble this into our mixture to kind of break it up a little bit. 
And this as is, is an amazing recipe. And to give credit where credit's due, it's actually my grandma's recipe. She got it from a Catholic church that she went to back in Michigan. So this is an oldie, but a goodie. I did tweak a couple of things just to make it vegan, but for the most part, it's very much her recipe. So that's another thing that I love about making this. So if you want to stop here, this is an amazing recipe. But if you want to zhuzh it up just a little bit, keep on with me. <laughs> I'm going to add about a cup and a half of frozen peas that I've defrosted. This is going to add another texture and some more brightness and flavor into our spanakopita. Not totally traditional, but really good, I promise. And then I'm going to add a giant handful, probably about a little bit over a fourth cup of toasted pine nuts for some good crunch. Also adds a nice little buttery note. These two ingredients have exponentially upped my spanakopita game. <laughs> so we've got our filling ready. We're ready to move on to our filo dough crust. So simple. You literally just buy this in the freezer section at your grocery store. It's usually by like uh, dessert pies, things like that. It is accidentally vegan. So we're totally good to go in that department. So I'm gonna open this up. We're gonna use a whole box for this recipe. It comes in two little sleeves. So if you ever feel like doing a smaller pie, you can definitely do that. I just left these on the counter for about an hour. You can also just leave them in your fridge overnight and they'll defrost just fine. So I'm gonna use one roll for the bottom and one for the top. And what we're gonna do is just lay down. Well, first what we're gonna do is figure out a way for you to see this better. There we go. I think that'll be hopefully easier for you guys to see. Just unwrapping this, as you can see, they're just incredibly thin little pieces of dough here. So while we were defrosting our spinach, I also melted about a cup of vegan butter. Any brand will work. This is country crock, which I really like to bake with. It has a nice mild buttery flavor. So I'm just taking a little silicone brush and greasing our pan here. And then we're going to one by one, this part is a little tedious, kind of like if you've seen my baklava video, which you haven't, you should, I'll link it above. It's so good, also so simple. But we're just gonna lay down a piece of phyllo and then brush on some butter, then lay on a piece of phyllo and brush on some butter until we get that whole first pack done. And that'll be at the bottom layer of our crust. You can definitely do two at a time if you wanna use less butter, or if you're getting antsy and wanna save time, it'll work just as well. The more layers you do though, the crispier and the flakier everything's gonna be. And please don't worry if your phyllo starts to break apart, you can totally put it back together by placing it in the pan and putting butter over top. It is a little bit sensitive of a dough though. As soon as you open it, you gotta use it. It dries out really quickly, and becomes quite flaky. So, speaking of working quickly, <laughs> I have put this on five times speed so you don't have to sit and watch me layer these in slow motion. <laughs> So, cue uh, Fila music. Okay, last layer is going on gonna press that in there. I'm not gonna worry about putting butter on it because we're just gonna dump the filling right on top of there. It smells so fresh in here. I can't wait for spring. I don't know about you guys, but I'm just itching to be able to go outside without a giant jacket on <laughs> and not freeze my butt off. So I'm tossing this in here, all those beautiful greens. Once we get all of our filling in, we're just gonna do the same thing we did to our bottom crust to the top with that second little roll of phyllo. Filo is upon us. <laughs> just scrunching it in here and I'm going to add a bit more vegan butter on top just to make sure we get a nice crunchy glistening crust. And then I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees. It's going to take between 50 and 55 minutes for this to cook. You're looking for a golden brown crunchy crust. I'll show you what it looks like. Okay in my oven it was exactly 50 minutes for it to come out looking like this. And I have kept the sound on so you can hear the crunch that happens. Look at those layers. This is going to be 
so good. It smells incredible in my kitchen. I know I say this a lot, but I wish you could smell, hear that crunch. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. <laughs> with all of those layers going on, I like to pass through with my knife at least a couple times to make sure we're getting all the way through the pie. And I'm not gonna be skipping on the sides of the piece tonight. <laughs> go big or go home. Just gonna get this cut up here, going through a couple few times to make sure all that crust is cut and we will be ready to enjoy this beautiful spinach pie. Like I mentioned in the intro, this is amazing right out of the oven hot. It's just as good cold though. If you keep it in the fridge overnight, you can use this kind of like a meal prep, cut it up, put it in your lunch box and take it and you don't even have to worry about reheating it. It's almost like those flavors melt even more. You don't get quite the crunch factor when it's cold, but it still tastes amazing. Let's take a little look here. Look at all that green, so fresh and delicious. I can't wait for you guys to give this a try. Please let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're all staying safe and healthy and I can't wait to talk to you soon. Cheers.